safety and to increase sustainability of the programs. And with some race to the top money that Massachusetts has um, gotten, we, are, we think that we are, on, are definitely on the right track. And these regional STEM networks will be working to coordinate within various areas of the state the various resources and the data so that there will be better access to all of that. Um, we're also considering um, scaling up some big statewide initiatives, and I won't go through all of them, but there's one called Mass Math and Science Initiative, which um, drives school culture of high expectations and has, I just want to get this right, it currently working with 6,700 children in 44 schools across 33 districts in Massachusetts to prepare them for college and careers in STEM and make sure that they go through um, advanced placement courses. And then another one is the Advanced Robotics Institute, which is a program begun by Quinsigamon Community College at Microsoft, um, which serves over 750 uh, children in a program that is very hands-on, uh, all about robotics and building a pipeline for these students to uh, go from elementary to middle to high school and into college. So there's a lot of exciting stuff going on and um, for me the words, really the three key words are the sustainability of the program, the scalability of the program, and the collaboration of resources to make it effective. Right. Um, I want to have a follow-up question to both of you before I open it up to the audience again. Um, you had talked about, you know, ways to engage girls, uh, particularly in STEM, and, you know, you want to make it fun, you want to make it, you know, appealing to them on a very visceral level and get them involved and engaged, and absolutely that's very important, but you also have the counter problem of gender stereotyping in that process. This is something that bothers a lot of women scientists who are adults now, you have erector sets that they make pink, and those are the girls' erector sets. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, Donica McKellar, who has written a series of wonderful books on math, uh, specifically for junior high uh, girls, um, has been accused of pinkifying math. Where is the balance? Because you want to hit them where they live. They do care about this stuff. They care about cooking and makeup and shopping. And that is appealing to them. But how, by doing so, are you playing into destructive gender stereotypes? And I'd like to hear from both of you on this. I want to respond to the earlier question, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's it's uh, it adds to what what it supplements what what Ruth was talking about, which was really a very good blueprint. I want want to talk about it on a smaller level. What do you do in your own school? Mm -hmm. Is you make it a school project, and how do you involve the students in deciding what? to do. And obviously you need to set up in a committee and begin assessment of some sort, but you could involve even little kids. You know, do we like science? What do we do enough science? I mean you can ask questions and you could have young children asking doing surveys even, which is a form of science. Uh, and we can teach them that way and they become involved. What other suggestions could we do? We're thinking of buying X. What do you you know and some of them won't know what you're talking about, but they can learn. And some of them may actually give very good, good uh, suggestions. And I think that's extraordinarily uh, important. I think it's important to come up with very specific recommendations and get everybody to buy into it. You can take the recommendations. These are process kinds of things rather than content. So pass the recommendations around to everybody in the school who has a role to play and say, do we need to change these? How are these? Do these make sense? Will they work? Do we need, have we left anything out? It's just as a way of involving everybody in what the school is planning, planning to do. Um, now I have forgotten what the first question was. Uh, no, the question yeah. had to do with um, how do you appeal to girls' oh. interests and yet not reinforce gender yeah. stereotypes? Yeah. I mean, it's a tough yeah. balance. There's a balance there. Yeah. I think you don't buy them pink erector sets, but I have to tell you, if I'd had a pink erector set when I was little, I would have loved it. I wanted one very badly. If that's what it would have taken, I would have been happy to do it. But I think it's better not to and just say, here it is. Um, there are, I think there are lots of things you can do. I think you can say it's a problem. Not as many girls go in as boys, and we think that's probably not right and not fair. That's sort of to their self-interest. We need everybody. We need all the good people who, you know, who could be here, and we're trying to increase that. And I think that's a reasonable thing to say. Um, the collaboration, which is somewhat of a female stereotype, we want everybody to learn how to collaborate, and we also think everybody needs to know how to compete. These are not gender, you know, they're not in your genes. And everybody, in some situations, uh, there probably it is good to compete. Scientists do compete. 
And that's probably not a bad idea sometimes. But they also collaborate, and we need to teach them both, but not as a stereotype. And I think that makes all the difference. These are people competencies, not girls or not boy competencies. I would just say that, you know, pink sets are um, a marketing tool just yeah. like everything <laughs> else is. Uh, uh, and um, I really don't think they're necessary yeah. to engage girls in STEM. Uh, at the Girl Scouts, we try to get girls to feel very confident and empowered for being girls. And our programs are led by our girls. And uh, that is the kind of self-esteem that we t that is critical for girls to buck trends when they come upon in incidences where they don't feel welcome or they feel as if they're being minimized in any way. So um, I somehow don't think pink erecta sets mm -hmm. are going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that um, you know parents' choices of toys for girls are very critical to that early interest and that ability to capture that early interest in a way that doesn't get lost or minimized. Yeah. Excellent. Do we have questions from the audience? Uh, there's one up front here and then we will get to you and right after. Remind me, hold your hand up again after we finish with this guy. Right here. I have a statement because I'm one of the sponsors and the reason that I'm sponsoring this event is because I'm a single father. I raised a daughter Fantastic. who um, is um, went to independent school, uh, and I want to commend you for the contribution that you're making. Thank you. Um, one of the things, questions that I have today, because now that I've raised a daughter, I'm now working with African-American girls around building a bicycle shop in North Minneapolis. And I want like to invite you to give me any advice. One of the things I have noticed is the lack of a voice, um, and so I'm working on that. And the other piece is how to attract the girls who might be interested in makeup, although I did use makeup to teach my daughter calculus. <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, binomials and trinomials, you can use a makeup kit. <laughs> so um, I'm just wondering what you think about that, because we want to use a bicycle as a metaphor for the life at the yeah. edge of the rainbow. Thank you. Well, that's a beautiful metaphor, and I commend you for your work. I think that um, Girls are more and more interested in exercise and fitness, and uh, their whole image, self-image, is very much tied to how they look, um, like most of us in the room, I'm sure. But the thing is that um, you can use that interest to engage them in what you're doing, which is you know around all of those issues. Plus, it also has a huge engineering component to go back to what Giannis was saying this morning. How do you build a bicycle? You know, that is an engineering problem. And I think that if you bring in all of these other very relevant um, ways of doing it, there are also, I'm sure you know this, but lots of technologies today where you can build things online and then make them real. And girls love technology, and so that might be a great way to do it. But um, I think that um, a bicycle to get you to the end of the rainbow sounds just great to me. We had another question up here. Um, this question is oh, She's going to bring you a mic. Sure. Unless you just want to shout. I can do that as well. <laughs> This question is predominantly for Bernice, but Ruth, if you wouldn't mind weighing in on it as well. Um, based on your research, um, Bernice, and knowing that most of us here are from girls' schools, is there a list that you could give us to help us with our faculty and administrators to understand some of our own behaviors that we should be looking out for, even though we're